Uh, good morning, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome uh, today in, in this beautiful Python day in Verona. I'm going to talk about new scroller via Langchain and Gemini APIs in uh, Python, of course. I mean, is there anything else to do this with? I mean, right? Uh, oh, I'm sorry, I was confused. This is Ruby Day. We're going to talk then about new scroller via Langchain.rb and Gemini APIs. How cool is that? Sorry for being silly but I wanted to make sure everybody was caffeinated. <laughs> so uh, we're going to, the, the talk of today is going to be like 70% demo. I, I really want to show you stuff, but I'm going to embed the demos in other parts of the presentation. I don't want to keep them all for the end. So it's like uh, 25 minutes of presentation and 10 minutes of slide. Um, I know you, everybody knows Gen AI. You know, I know already Gen AI, Ricardo, why is it, are you telling that to me? Well, I need to talk about embeddings a bit deep deeper than usual, so I need some time to describe that. Then I'm going to talk about the problem I'm going to solve, my beautiful applica application, and uh, the demo. A few questions for you from the audience, which I'm going to skip now. So first, what is Gen AI? So if you think about it, like we move from a deterministic way of defining a cat to neural network where you give it 10,000 pictures of cats and dogs and it's able to infer what is a cat to today generative language models where you give it like a gazillions of data and you say, okay, now you know everything about divine comedy from Dante and maybe you can also tell me what is a cat. And, you know, generative AI in a nutshell is just a big powerful autocomplete system. It's able to find the most likely word close to existing text. So it's a big completer. And since you can complete for a million times in a row, you can create a million words by just completing, 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 which is why it's great at generating stories and also making up stuff. If you ask yourself, when did this happen first? Well, my take on it as a Googler is that the most transformational um, ar um, article or re research paper that actually started this revolution is the 12th of June 2017 with attention is all you need. Attention is a piece of the so-called transformer uh, or auto attention, if I remember correctly, that allows it to auto infer which words are close to each other and this way to learn uh, word cross correlation. And if you think about it, Google has a huge history um, of research and innovation in the AI space, think from the TensorFlow release to Transformer to BERT, AlphaFold, AlphaGo, and then we had pa uh, BERT, Palm, Bard, and finally Gemini in, an incre in, in a crescendo of capabilities, right? Gemini, if you remember, was the first LLM to be natively multimodal, so it was able to read an image. I actually use it for my scuba diving stuff. I say, tell me if there's a shark in there. Watch the video for me and tell me if there is a shark, so I can just flag my, uh, uh, it zbobinates uh, um, videos for me. If you don't speak Italian, uh, there's no translation for zbobinare. It's like uh, doing a very boring, uh, long uh, uh, movie watching in a way. But let's talk about embeddings. Embeddings are one of my favorite aspects of Gen AI and not, not everybody knows about them. Embeddings in a nutshell is a vector representing um, something. It could be an image, a video or text. For today, just text. Um, text is, a, is the easiest, is the easiest to comprehend. And the, the, the best way to, to understand an embedding or a, or a vector with 768 dimension, in my opinion, is to see it. This is the most famous uh, data set in the world, MNIST. This is from the 60s, if I remember correctly, it's super old. When I studied in the university, it was already old. This is as old as it is. And um, these are all the numbers. You can see the nine and the seven can be close. This is another data set. Probably these are YouTube videos. And you can see these are all Bruges, Bruges, Bruges. Chinese uh, or Japanese word for Bruges, or maybe it was Korean. And here we're watch, uh, looking at a different keyword, which I think is stratosphere, you see? So all articles or things about the stratosphere are close to each other. I know what you're thinking, Ricardo, you're cheating. This is just a keyword matching. Not really. This is a vector representative of that. Okay, and maybe stratosphere is the, close, is the most important word of the title, but it's not only that. Um, apologies, let me move on. So again, string, embedding model, numbers. Are you clear with it? Global warming, embedding, as simple as that. 
So this is my demo number one, which is instantiate a, a long chain um, LLM with Gemini, for example, calculate the embedding, big numbers, calculate the closest numbers, uh, the closest article, sorry, and bingo, you get the article ID, article title, and this number here, which is the distance. This is super interesting, so I'm going to show you in a second. So, uh, how did I do this? Let's get our hands dirty with Ruby stuff. So, I used Postgres for, uh, as a database. You can choose from a number of native uh, database, uh, native vector database, but I prefer to use a generic database and to also do vectors, which is, uh, and I know how to instantiate Postgres in Google Cloud. So, I mean, for me, it's a, it's a no-brainer. If you install the Gem uh, Neighbor, you will have a very simple uh, migration, which is actually e idiotic simple, uh, enable extension vector, which calls this create extension if not exists, which enables vector on Postgres. Now, so Postgres, PG vector is this add-on to Postgres that allows to do similarity searches because again, I don't think with SQL it's easy to do select asterisk from table where uh, the 768 fields are similar to the 768 fields. You can say where the third number equals the third number of the other uh, vector of the other uh, article, but you see uh, similarity is more complex and. Uh, and if you can think about it, 10,000 articles, similarity between 10,000 articles makes it uh, the square. Uh, so it's 100 million distances that you want to compute. So you better be efficient or you're going to spend hours just to do a single query, right? For the model, I use the testimony Gecko Multilingual. So it's able to translate Italian and English. Well, to, to compare Italian and English similarly. So I can say sport in Italian and sport in English. I know you're thinking, oh, but sport is the same word. Yes, it is, but uh, La Pagella del Campionato is Italian. And the embedding for La Pagella del Campionato should be something sport, even though the word sport doesn't uh, happen there. You didn't see that coming, right? The Gem Neighbor also injects this beautiful neighbor distance, which I really, really, really love. So let me show you uh, because you don't believe me. I know you say like, Ricardo, you're cheating, you're cheating. So article last, similaria. So this is the first article. ID, title, summary, content, author, links, publish, blah, 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 blah. And this should also have a neighbor distance. And it does. So dot neighbor distance. This field doesn't exist. If I say article dot first dot neighbor distance, say what the hell are you talking about? You see no method error, but uh, puts. Yeah, uh, well, it's outputting the article anyway. I cannot do anything about that. So the neighbor distance output is injected the Rails way, like the Ruby way. It's injected into the active record by this gem after you do the query, which I really love. So uh, you can actually see it online, demo one embedding. I just take a random article and you say Ilara Salis in Budapest and you can see a lot of stuff about Ilaria Salis. Uh, Mattarella dal carcere, ma Ilaria Salis, Salis, Mattarella. And this is all about Ilaria Salis. So uh, let me see another article. Uh, evacuation order issues to Canada, Alberta. Uh, so you see the, here we have evacuation and uh, we also have Canada and Canadian. We, so we're batching both here and both here. And the embedding is only one. There's only one vector. We don't have a vector per word. So I hope this shows you how powerful this is. Okay, let me move on. Uh, let me move on. Okay, now that I showed you what an GenAI does, what embedding are, and I showed you already, uh, uh, I sdoganated the first uh, demo, I can show you the problem I'm trying to solve because here we're here to solve a big, difficult problem. LLMs are not perfect. And I know that I, I work for a company who gives you a very powerful LLM called Gemini, but still I need to admit LLMs generative AI at the moment is not perfect. It changes too fast and tools cannot cope with them. It's risky and reliable and predictable. We never know what's coming out of it. I mean, 
my demo is risky. I don't know if my demo is going to work until I finished it. I can, I can do it 10 times, but the 11th could fail. And it did fail. Uh, it can jailbreak, it can have IP and copyright issues. More interestingly, it has outdated data. So if uh, we finished, uh, I mean, a competitor uh, was famous for having data from like uh, a year ago. Uh, I think Gemini usually is one month old. So if you ask news from yesterday, it doesn't know them. So that gave me the idea. How about demonstrating the imperfection of the lambs by augmenting them through news retrieving? And that's exactly what I'm trying to do. Plus hallucination and other stuff. So how can we fix LLM's tendency to hallucinate, number one, so make up stuff, and to give you not up-to-date stuff, particularly news. You don't want to read the, the election from 10 years ago or the basketball or soccer results from a year ago. You know them already, right? You want to know the one from yesterday or from today. The solution that everybody knows is RAG. But I'm going to tell you there is something even more powerful than RAG. So what is RAG? Retrieval Augmented Generation is generating embedding. You've seen it already. Similarity search. You've seen it already. This you didn't see. Construct a RAG prompt to send to the LLM and get the response back from the LLM in natural language. So RAG is like you do a query to the LLM and get a response, but she gets context in text. It is, you give it instruction, the prompt number one. You give it context, a dump of the closest article to global warming or to Hilaria Salis or whatever you want, and then questions. In my case, actually, the question doesn't exist. I, I skip this part. It's all in the instruction. It's just like summarize it for me. But of course, you could do multiple questions on the same context. You could stop it here and then ask a train of questions. That's something that makes a lot of sense. So my solution. Uh, let me write down something here. Right. Okay, so my solution in more detail. Uh, let's talk about Ruby on Rails now, right? So um, I created two application, a Ruby crawler that just fits my database, is the is the responsible for my database having 10,000 articles, okay? And each article has its own embedding, so we have a big pool to choose from. That's done, its job is done, and most of the articles were, were parsed like a month ago. Apologies, you know, it's very CPU intensive, I don't do it a lot. Web app, this is what we're going to talk about today. It's a Rails 7, Ruby 3, Postgres, Dockerize application. It has actually um, a very cool feature, which is a cloud build. So let me show it to you. Uh, the demo, this is my second demo, so demo 2. And demo 2, and I push it. Now, this is the simplest uh, uh, change ever. I just changed the version to demo 2. And this should trigger a build. And if you see my application in, in the cloud, Gemini News Dev, it's a, a version 0 0.35.8 demo. This is my previous version. So in a few minutes, you should see this build will start. As you can see, it already started for 13 seconds. In a few minutes, this should, let me reload. In a few minutes, this should, uh, give us um, uh, usually it's four minutes and a half. This should give us a new version and the new version should actually pop uh, in here into the version 0 0.358 demo 2. But this is like a parallel job. Plenty of environment variable, dockerized, blah, blah, blah. My favorite, I want to spend a minute to talk about the libraries. Postgres, SQLite, FitJira is the, is the thing that I use for parsing RSSs, very powerful. Uh, there's a bunch of Google Cloud uh, APIs to do Google Cloud stuff, of course. Uh, uh, Matrix is to do things with Matrix, Matrix's uh, neighbor is the add-on that I told you about to do similarity search. Charkic and group date go well together to create graphs. Let me show you some graphs that I created with Charkix. Okay, article by tag, article by type, closest article, article by day. As you can see, they were all from March. Okay, then I have the late job because I'm too lazy to do it right with Mongo. 
Um, Google, Google, Google. Gemini AI is a Ruby gem created by my friend Guilherme from Brazil. Uh, he created a gem to interface with Gemini, and I, it's beautiful, so I use it every day. And Langchain RB. This requires some more time, so I'm going to show you in a second. Wait, but isn't Langchain a Python thing? I think I made the joke already, right? So yes, Langchain is a Python thing, but we have the Ruby version written by Andre Bondare of a bunch of 80 committers. And uh, it, uh, it is a gem that uh, creates a number of entities, LLMs, tools, and other stuff that allows you to, you can seamlessly, uh, seamlessly create an LLM from Anthropic, from Gemini, Mistral, OpenAI, Olama, etc. by just changing the constructor and give it, of course, the right API key. You can do embeddings, uh, chat, completion, whatever, vector search, uh, agent and assistance and function calling, which is the one I'm going to demonstrate in the most complicated demo ever. The deployment, as I showed you, I deploy to Cloud Build and I deploy to two places, dev and prod. This is dev. This is the build, which is still hanging on. And in a, few, in a couple of minutes, it will be finished. And this is the, um, some statistics. This is the uh, architecture. So whenever I do a commit, there is a trigger on cloud build that triggers uh, a script. The script first Docker builds. Then Docker pulls, pu pushes it to a Docker uh, image in Artifact Registry. This is all GCP. Again, this is, uh, I work for Google Cloud, so I hope you forgive me about that. And then finally, it pushes to Cloud Run, which is K-native. It's like a, it's a simplified Kubernetes where you just uh, run a Docker container in the cloud, okay? Uh, if you don't have to want to have the complexity of Kubernetes, Cloud Run is the best uh, place in the cloud, in my opinion. And then it calls uh, Vertex AI to do embeddings, generation, summarization, and function calling. Okay, let's go, let's delve into the demos. So I created four demos for you. The first, you've seen it already, is as simple as uh, uh, this. Uh, is, you've seen it already. Then we have RAG, News Retriever, it's a tool, and the Assistant, which is, the, is, a, com uh, is a complexity crescendo. Uh, for your convenience, I put all the demos in uh, um, under uh, in GitHub under Web App Docs demo. So there is one demo that you can just paste to the command line. So you can do something like Rail C, and you can just say, "Oh, give me the last article and calculate the embedding." Bingo! I have the article now. Now find the similar article and now write them nicely to me. Bingo. You can actually do it even better. No, that's done. Okay. So this is as simple as, as it gets. Let me do a control minus, uh, minus, minus. Oh, the well, meno, meno, meno. Okay, control minus, 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 minus. Okay. Because you don't see, you, you don't need to see them. Okay, this seems like perfect. Okay. This was the demo number one, very, very simple, and it probably comes better in the UI. Let's get to the demo number two. The demo number two is more complicated. It starts exactly like this. So, retrieve, rag is in three parts, retrieve, augmented generation, retrieve, global warming, embed, close this article, and give me a map. Let's do this, uh, let's do this, uh, Demo number two, let's do this together. So query, embedding, bingo, closest article, and uh, let's see the article we're going to feed. Okay, how climate change is changing heat waves and blah, blah, blah. So we have six articles for climate change, or five, but currently yeah, six. What do, you, what do we use it for? So this embedding, Close article, you know this already, I don't want to get boring. But now there is the interesting part of the prompt. We need to give it the instruction. We need to give it the context. The context, uh, uh, spoiler alert, is just like a, 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 an excerpt from each article pasted over and over for six times. So let's do it together. So this is the short article in yellow. You are a prompt summarizer, talk about global warming, uh, given these articles. 
Now these are the article excerpt in Azure or light blue. Bingo, these are the articles. You don't need to read them now because hey, we have somebody who does it, does it for you. And now we are putting the two together and asking uh, uh, Gemini, well, in this case, it's a different LLM, but doesn't matter, to summarize this. Climate change is making heat waves linger for longer stretches of time, blah, blah, blah. So this is what it does. So this is the result, the generation result of RAG. I hope you like this. You can see the same result on the web by clicking on Bella Raga. Let's do global warming. Let's do US politics just to change uh, the topic. Oh, I do it in prod. Oh, I think in prod is broken. Oh, okay, it's working. So, polity, blah, 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 blah. These are the articles. And this is the result. The US has designated Kenya as its first non-NATO ally in sub-Saharan Africa. Beautiful. The US is calling for swift police deployment of Haiti after mission is well killed. Blah, blah, blah. So, not too bad, huh? Now, let's move to the demo number three. In the demo number three, I'm going to introduce a new thing called a tool. Uh, this is very important because it's in preparation of the demo number four, which is going to blow your mind, hopefully. Okay, so in the demo number three, we are going. I'm going to show you a tool created by Andre, and, and it's part of the official Langchain tool. So if you go here, let me kill some windows. Uh, not here. Uh, let me search uh, here. Bingo. So this is part of Langchain Gem. You see Langchain, LLB, Langchain, pa, 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 tools. You have multiple tools, calculator, database, file system, Google search, and news retriever. Spoiler alert, Andre cre uh, created this for me. <laughs> so thanks, Andre. So the news retriever has a JSON and a, and a Ruby. Every one of these has a JSON and a Ruby. The Ruby contains the implementation. The JSON contains the open API specification. The open API specification is just a standard way to say, hey, this function has an integer as an input, a string as an output, and the string has this meaning, and the integer has this meaning, and blah, blah, blah. Let me show you, because this is the real, you, you know, I know what you think. You think like, I don't care about the JSON. What Gemini cares about is actually the Ruby code. And we say, nope, that's what I thought. No, that's wrong. Gemini will never read this code. Gemini will just read the JSON and will just infer and program itself to use this tool based on the description that you give here. So be uh, very precise and try to... I did a lot of feedback loop in the tool that I created into changing the description myself. So you need to do a great work of prompting that description. Why? Because when you give a number of tool to Gemini in the next demo and say, Gemini, figure out what to use, he will use that information that is in the JSON, not the, J the information which is in the Ruby. That, for me, was surprising. Okay, so demo number three. Um, the best way to see the demo number three is just on the UI. This is so simple. So, demo number three is news retriever, get everything about Vin Italy. Boom. Spitz a JSON. Boom. I parse a JSON. And this is the JSON that comes out. You think, oh, Ricardo, you're cheating. Anybody gives me a new, let's put Bologna. Poof, poof, search about Bologna, boom, boom, boom. Articles about Bologna. Did you know that the, uh, Eric Schmidt donated one million to the Garizenda? Super cool. And if you don't want Bologna, you can put Canicati. Or, um, haha, there is nothing about Canicati. Weird. Let's say my Ferrara, my origin city. Okay. Wow, we have something about Ferrara. Amazing. So there you go. Uh, I don't want to show you, like, this is as simple as it is. Instantiate the tool, get everything. There is nothing special about this tool, to be fair. You guys can code something much more complicated than this. Why this is important? Because this sets the ground for me to go to the demo number three, the demo number four, which uses this plus another tool. So, the, the demo number four uses uh, the, uh, wait a second, uh, fix page, fix page 55. Okay. The demo number four um, 
we, I'm going to introduce you an assistant. And this demo can only be done in, um, in console because as you will see, it's very live and it can fail, it can work well. Uh, pray for me that it will work well. So first thing, we instantiate the LLM and then we use, uh, we ask uh, what model are we using? Oh, Gemini 1.5, that's powerful. Now we instantiate the assistant and uh, th this is the hardest part. The assistant, uh, what is the assistant? It's an object that contains an LLM, which is the brain, thread, which is uh, the, the, the dump of the chat. So the history of the chat is, is dumped into this thread. The instruction, which is the prompt uh, with which you, you, you program this assistant or this agent to do stuff. You could run it once an hour to do some cron jobs. And this is the instruction to do these cron jobs. And finally, you have an array of tools. What is a tool? As you've seen before, it's a Ruby code and JSON that represent an array of function, uh, functionalities within a certain spe uh, speciality. So the news retriever, as you remember, is able to retrieve news from the internet. And the article tool is something entirely new. Let's take a look at the article tool. So the article tool is a new tool with three function able to save an article on Active Record deliver an article from RT record and return a mysterious Carlesian URL. What the hell is that? I don't know. I would like to show you, but then I will break my, um, my, uh, my surprise. Notice that the build is finished. So now uh, this should be demo two and not demo one, bingo. So 358 demo two. So we closed an old thread. Okay, let's go back to the assistant so i don't want to write assistant.say many times so first i will call the assistant ad i will call the api in the verbose way latest five news from italy so this will call the api and now the assistant needs to decide which tool to use to execute this let's see what just happened assistant.history I color, colorized it. So let me do command plus. Uh, sorry, again. So, Ricardo, I, I colorized it for your convenience. So, uh, usually the chat with assistant is always user, model, user, model, user, model. The user talks, and the model can either talk back to me or it can call function. So, here it is me say latest news for Italy. He is understanding he needs to call the news retriever for the get top headlines function with arguments Italia and page size five. It was it, it was easy to parse this, but again, he did it automatically. And if you don't believe me, and these are the five articles that he got in JSON. But let's say they say, like, uh, nah, give me the next five. So now, hopefully, he's smart enough to say, I want page two, because it retrieved the 34 articles. You see, these are 34 articles from Italy. So this gives you the second five. And as you can see here, if I call the history again, uh, it calls page five, page two. You see this page two, he understands that it gets a second pagination of size five. So instead of one, two, three, four, five, you get six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Awesome. Now, oh, I want to know everything about Ferragnet, so, um, which is a famous uh, couple who just split up. Tell me all you know, uh, tell me all you know from past article Re Ferragnet. Now, the only thing I can go wrong here is that instead of using this information, it fetch new one. I cannot process external website specifically this I can okay. So I say okay. Fair enough. Uh, please save the Ferranes article. Hopefully he will be smart enough to Okay. Uh, okay, this is a failure, so show me the latest five articles again, please. So I'm re-asking this. 
this didn't go in the direction where I wanted to go. And say next five. Apologies, this is a mistake. It's a clear mistake. Probably I, I should have prompted it better. Okay. Uh, cool. Save the first article. Now he should, at least, he should be able to save the Ferranius article into the database. If it, if it takes time, we are in a good place. Yes. It's looking for stuff, is saving and embedding, is committing. Boom! It happened. Assistant.history. So he created an article, fantastic. Now I will say, fantastic. Please give me the ID of, of the article and the Carlesian URL. What is this Carlesian URL? So this is saved to RFT record. You know that with the article, I can uh, I can just do article dot oops article dot find uh, what is the article ID bingo. But before I press enter, I want to click on this because you must be curious. What is this? Oh, this is the production on cloud uh, dev environment. Uh, so it's a dev environment on Cloud Run, and this article has just been created a second ago. So as you can see, uh, article uh, dot find this dot created at dot created at. Oops, sorry. So it was created on Saturday 23 at 10.43.58. Now it's uh, is uh, uh, 12.45, but yes, there are two hours of difference from UTC and, and Switzerland, so that's correct. Fantastic. So this is the article we just created a second ago. And uh, this is the original news on our RSS provided. Yes, bingo. So this is the online news from the URL that I got from the JSON. And the JSON, I created uh, I created it. As you can see, there's not much. There's just the title and the sorry, I have no access to the content. But I could, I'm thinking with Andre to actually power up the system to curl the article that we know from here and retrieve the content if unavailable. So this will be substituted by a curl of the content. And this can be done by the tool itself. So. That was the end of it. Um, would you like a second demo? No, I think we're good. So this is the end of it. Um, that's all from my side. My name is Ricardo. Reach out to me to, on Twitter or send me an email. And uh, thank you very much. I'm going to close the recording now.